is extremely busy around Christmas time. It's absolutely crushed under with work. And sometimes he doesn't get to see every boy and girl, you understand. And then sometimes Rudolph and the reindeer start giving trouble and they slow up. And anyway, every house he go up and down the chimney and then there's a piece of cake and a drop of the... And so he slows down as the night wears on. And sometimes he forgets with certain toys that he's leaving to supply batteries. Now, you can't blame him because he's so busy. He just leaves out the batteries because he's... And all of that. And, <laughs> and so uh, my advice to you is that you should cover yourself in case Daddy Christmas visiting your house with a lovely toy which requires batteries, in case he forgets that, remember that it's a very, very sad occasion on a Christmas morning when a thing needs batteries and you don't have them. So bear that in mind and tool up for the occasion. And the second thing I always say to you on the toy show is that when all of these wonderful things that go boom and bang and work on batteries and light up and flashing things and all of that, when they are all forgotten and gone away, there is one treasure and one wonderful Christmas gift that you can give your children, and that is the gift of reading and the habit of reading, because that is a treasure that your child will have for all the rest of his or her life. And if you can instill it now, this is the time to do it. And that's why we always say that when all of these wonderful things are gone, the habit of reading is a wonderful treasure and a gift to give to your child. And don't underestimate it. And that's why we always say there are some lovely books on sale for Christmas, and you should think seriously about including at least one in whatever you think you want to give. And we've called on Kevin O'Connell, who is well known to you, to run through some of the books that he's chosen from the bookshelf. Let's have a welcome for Kevin O'Connell up here. Thanks, Okay, uh, okay. I've got loads of books, so let's get straight into it. Okay, first up, we've got a letter writer book and stationery set from Joshua Morris. And it op you open the box up just like a normal book, and inside you have got you've got a book which helps you write letters. You've got an address book. You've got a place for placing all your stamps. And this neat little touch down here, you open up a little drawer, and it's got the ink and your own personal stamps. Now, Christmas is a time of activity, so don't be surprised to see a load of activity books just like this one things that go sticker book things that go by road things that go in the sky things that go we see or things that go in your garden you can have loads of fun coloring in the pages or sticking in the stickers next we got my first christmas activity book by angela wilkes it's a step-by-step -step guide to making fun things for christmas everything from pot curry to mandar chocolates or bonbons or even christmas crackers darling kindersley have come up with their own activity book and it's called the action pack pyramid book and explains to you all about the pyramids of ancient Egypt. It has models, games, books and much, much more. Now, pop-up books, they remain a Christmas favour ever. There's loads and loads of them. I picked out this one. It's called Snow White and the Other Fantastic Fairy Tales. Let's get through these. Okay, first of all, you got Snow White there. Got that one. We move along next to the Pied Piper of Hamlet, one of my favourite tales. Pied, pa Pied Piper, leaving the kids away. Next, we got Beauty and the Beast. And finally, last but by no means least, we have Pinocchio. And each pop-up book, each pop-up comes with its own little book, which you can see just there. Moving along now for the inquiring young and not so young, bit of a controversial book here, we have The Miracle of Bert, a fantastic see-through view of how a child develops. Watch in amazement as the child grows and develops in the mother's womb as you look through the book, month by month as the page turns. Look at the brilliant diagrams and it gives honest answers to all those tricky questions like the boards and the bays and that sort of thing. Now, personalised books are always a favourite and they're in huge amount and I've got a brilliant one for you here. It's called When I Grow Up and it's from the Personalised series and I'll give you a read of this gaze in for a shock here. It was a beautiful sunny day in Dublin. More than anything else in the world, gay born, aged so many years, wanted to be outside playing with Frank McNamara but today was a school day, and Gabo was in his classroom. Big R from everyone. Oh. Now, here's a book I just couldn't put down. It's called Catkin, and it's from Antonia Barber. And there's some beautiful illustrations in there from PJ Lynch. I'll show you a couple of them. There we go. Just look at that. I mean, I think illustrations can sometimes make a book as well. Now, I'll give you... Tip about the story, it's Catkin, he's a small guy, he's so small he can fit on the palm of your hand, but that's not all. He goes out and he rescues a poor little girl named Carrie who was kidnapped by the powerful lord of the little people, you know. I've told you the plot, now go out and buy the book. <laughs> Did you ever wonder what Ireland was like 50 years ago? Well if so, well then this book is for you. Life in Ireland 50 years ago. And the special thing about this book is that it was written entirely by the primary school children of County Mead. They wrote the whole thing, they researched it, they asked their grandparents, their elderly neighbours what life was like 50 years ago. 
I mean, they could have gone about it a much easier way. They should have just asked Frank McNamara. He was around at that time, <laughs> and I heard his music was doing well at the time as well. <laughs> Next up, we got one of the highly recommended books of the night. It's called Switchers from Kate Thompson. Now, it's absorbing and intriguing, a very unusual book. To restore the ecological balance, Tess and Kevin set about on a quest to defeat the powerful and evil force which is released when the world starts to freeze over. It's a romantic adventure, determination, and courageous book, and it's very good, and I highly recommend it. I'll give it about an 8 out of 10, and I'm very stingy with me marks. Next up, we got a very funny book. It's called Norbert Bear MD, and it's by Paul Carson. After reading the hilarious exploits of Norbert Bear MD and his faithful assistant, Bamba Bear, a trip to the doctor will never be the same again. And it's slightly ironic that the author, Paul Carson, he's a doctor as well, sort of slagging his own train there. Now, in February, Ray Darcy, you know all him of Den TV, invited all the young viewers to imagine what life would be like in the 24th century. And the result, it was the MS Readathon Den TV anthology, which is into the 24th century like an episode of Star Trek. Okay, you've got loads of kids writing brilliant stories with great imaginations. And the big thing is here, all the royalties from this book go to MS Readathon. So it's a worthy cause. Get out and buy it. Two other books which I'd just like to mention. Jasp Japanese Whispers by Ronnie Lampkin. That one there. And Dawn Flight by Pat Hines. They're both available on the Wolfhound Press and I enjoyed reading them. Okay, we now move on to what I consider an essential in any household. It's the Kingfisher Child, Child, Child Ward encyclopedia. I mean, it's a fountain of knowledge. It has everything about plants, animals, space, science. Everything you want to know, it's in this book right here. Now, the thing about Irish books is sometimes the parents don't know Irish, so they don't want, won't think that the kids want it. Well, I found a solution. It's called Scale to Seamus, and it's by Padder O'Reilly. And the good thing about this, it comes in an English and an Irish version. It tells, us, it tells the story of two twins, Seamus and Sean, as they live in the Gwaeltop and Moynihan.